This is the ultimate battle that concerns the life and death of humanity. Millions of zombie troops are at the city gates, preparing to conquer the last remaining fortress on Earth. Even the once bitter enemies, Alice and Albert, have set aside their grievances and teamed up to fight against the zombies. What they don't realize is that this is all an elaborate plot by Albert. Albert's true intention in saving Alice is to exploit her powers to deal with Umbrella Corporation's rivals and the zombie army. The T-virus injected into Alice is merely a concoction of mixed drugs with a serum. Whenever Alice uses her superpowers, the serum suppresses the T-virus in her body, making her abilities temporary. Regrettably, the battle for the White House was not depicted in the sixth installment, it was only briefly explained. The outcome is that Albert emerges as the ultimate winner. Using Alice's superpowers, he annihilates the zombie army and the competitors of Umbrella Corporation. Leon and Ada Wong sacrifice their lives in the fight. Jill, too, falls victim to Albert's cruel actions. Only Alice manages to escape. The aftermath of the Great War leaves the White House in ruins, a testament to the devastating scale of the battle. Emerging from a hideout, Alice struggles to find useful items amidst the wreckage. Unexpectedly, a mutated bat, buried under the debris, is still alive. Alice hastily jumps into a car, starts the engine just in time to reverse away from the approaching monster, executing a 360-degree turn. However, the relentless creature catches up, its clawed tail piercing through the car's roof. Undeterred, Alice looks ahead and accelerates, swiftly passing through the obstacles. The pursuing monster crashes into them. Knowing that the creature won't give up easily, Alice performs a drift to turn the car around, preparing for a head-on confrontation. After successfully defeating the monster, Alice continues to navigate through the ruins. As she reaches a basement, the artificial intelligence Red Queen appears on the screen. Red Queen informs Alice that there are only 4,472 survivors left on Earth, and within 48 hours, they will all be eliminated. Thus, Red Queen urges Alice to prevent this from happening. Alice must head to the Hive in Raccoon City within the next 48 hours to find the latest antidote developed by Umbrella Corporation. The airborne antidote can eradicate the T-virus and all T-virus-infected zombies, thus saving the remaining survivors. Since Red Queen cannot take actions against Umbrella Corporation, only Alice can undertake this mission. Although Alice doesn't believe in Red Queen's words, she can only do what she is told. After all, this is the last hope to save mankind. Moreover, Albert is also at the Hive, and Alice must confront him. Without delay, Alice sets off, but not long after the car was driven out, it accidentally hit a roadblock and the car was completely scrapped. Alice is left with no option but to continue on foot. Luckily, she soon discovers a motorcycle under a pedestrian bridge. When Alice tries to get on the motorbike, she is electrocuted by the motorbike's defense system and falls unconscious. When Alice wakes up again, she is surprised to see Dr. Isaacs. It becomes apparent that the Isaacs she previously defeated was just a clone, and the motorcycle was a trap set by him. Subsequently, Alice is thrown out of an armored vehicle to attract the pursuing zombie horde. But seizing an opportunity, Alice eliminates one guard and climbs back into the armored vehicle. Dr. Isaacs realizes something is amiss and ambushes Alice from outside. After an intense battle, Alice manages to subdue Dr. Isaacs. Opening the door of the compartment holding the motorcycle, Alice chops off Dr. Isaacs' arm, disables the defense system, and swiftly escapes. Enduring the heavy barrage, Alice successfully distances herself from the armored vehicle and rushes to Raccoon City. The massive crater left by the nuclear explosion is a horrifying sight. As Alice arrives at a dilapidated building, she falls into a trap set by surviving humans. When she awakens from unconsciousness, she finds herself about to be violated by the survivors. Fortunately, Alice acts quickly and subdues them, just as the confrontation reaches a stalemate. A familiar figure suddenly appears, Claire, who had disappeared long ago. It turns out that Claire was also captured by the Umbrella Corporation after the cruise ship was attacked. She managed to escape while being transported and was eventually rescued by these survivors. However, there is little time for reunions as they discover that Isaacs, leading the zombie army, has entered Raccoon City. After discussing their plan, they decide to use the building as a stronghold to defend against the approaching horde. After they set up all the traps, a huge army of zombies is also approaching the city. 
This was an unwinnable war, but they had the advantage of geography and an endless supply of gasoline, as the zombie horde reached their firing range, Alice gave the order to throw ignited gasoline barrels. One of the armored vehicles was instantly destroyed. Seeing the dire situation, Isaacs immediately halted their advance and commanded his men to release a survivor, luring the zombie army towards the building. Alice quickly stopped the attack and ordered the people downstairs to open the gate and rescue the survivor. However, to her shock, just as the survivor is about to reach the entrance, Isaacs orders the survivor to be shot. Alice sees this and tries to close the gate, but Isaacs comes straight for the gate with a volley of rockets. As the gate broke open, people on the rooftop dropped massive stones, but it was not enough to stop the zombies from pouring in. Meanwhile, Isaac aimed the rocket launcher at the rooftop. After a round of bombardment, the survivor team suffered heavy casualties. The number of zombies downstairs increased, but fortunately, Alice had a contingency plan. She opened all the gasoline barrels, and a torrent of gasoline poured down. Without hesitation, Alice ignited it with a torch. The raging fire engulfed most of the zombies. Alice follows close behind, using the ropes of the zip line to head straight for Dr. Isaac's armored car from above. Isaac's was caught off guard as Alice climbed onto the vehicle's roof. Carrying a gasoline canister, Alice poured the gasoline into the vehicle's interior, lit a fuse, and threw it in. While Alice was dealing with one of Isaac's henchmen, another attacked her unexpectedly. He's Dr. Isaac's best fighter. Even Alice is no match for him, forcing her to pull out a gun. However, upon entering the vehicle's interior, Alice found that Isaacs had already escaped. To divert the remaining zombies, Alice tied up the wounded henchman to the back of the armored vehicle, making him experience the zombies chase. But soon, they realized that two more zombie armies were approaching, so they decided to head to the hive immediately. Only with the antidote could they stop the zombie army. Unbeknownst to them, Albert was monitoring their every move. When they arrived at the site of the nuclear explosion, Albert ordered the release of terrifying Cerberus dogs. Faced with a large number of Cerberus dogs, the group had no choice but to desperately run. Eventually, at the cost of losing a team member, they successfully reached the entrance of the hive. Strangely, the Cerberus dogs suddenly stopped pursuing them, indicating that something even more terrifying was inside the hive. Once inside the hive, they encountered another holographic projection of Red Queen, who revealed the reason for betraying Umbrella Corporation. Before the virus outbreak, a secret meeting was organized by the top brass of Umbrella Corporation, DR. Isaacs believed that the world was on the path to destruction due to the continuous growth of the human population and the limited resources of the Earth. Humanity's excessive exploitation led to global warming, the melting of polar ice caps, various natural disasters, and incurable diseases. Even nuclear wars erupted over resources. To change this, Dr. Isaacs proposed the human cleansing plan during the board meeting, which involved using the T-virus to massacre the human population on Earth. Members of the Umbrella Corporation will be hiding in the hive's dormant pods until the Earth regenerates, allowing them to take control of the world once again. Evidently, the T-virus leak from the hive was not an accident but a meticulously planned conspiracy. Although this plan contradicted Red Queen's protocol of safeguarding human lives, Red Queen couldn't harm any Umbrella Corporation employee, leaving her unable to stop Dr. Isaac's actions. However, Alice could, with only 37 minutes left before the last human stronghold would be breached. Their time was running out. Before the operation, Red Queen whispered to Alice on her earpiece that there was an undercover agent of the Umbrella Corporation among them. To avoid alerting anyone, Alice kept this information to herself. The group continued to delve deeper into the hive. However, as they passed through a massive ventilation duct, the large exhaust fan behind them suddenly activated. Any slight misstep would have sucked them all in with its tremendous force. One of the girls couldn't hold on and was instantly minced by the fan. But fortunately, the fan stopped shortly after. Subsequently, the group arrived at a glowing corridor, accidentally triggering a mechanism here. Alice fell into a dark room. The room was filled with human corpses, and horrifying monsters roamed around. Another teammate then fell down, but within seconds, the monsters killed him. Alice sees this and picks up her twin guns and fires wildly. The monster is reduced to a hornet's nest. In her startled state, Claire's boyfriend, Doc, 
suddenly appeared behind her. They then entered the classic laser corridor, using the holographic map provided by Red Queen, Alice successfully found the entrance leading to the depths of the hive. I didn't realize that underneath this was Umbrella Corporation's human hibernation chamber, and it looks like there are at least a few thousand of them, it's like a Resident Evil version of Noah's Ark. On Albert's side, he saw that Alice had gone deep into the belly of the base, he then had to open a dormant silo early and out of it came Dr. Isaacs, evidently. The Isaacs Alice had encountered earlier was a clone. Unaware of his status, the clone Isaacs continued to draw the zombie army towards the hive. As Alice and Doc, passing through a waterlogged tunnel, finally reached the innermost room where the real Dr. Isaacs was. Dr. Isaacs took out the only vial of the world-saving serum and threatened Alice not to make any rash moves. Alice reluctantly put down her weapons, but behind her, Doc aimed his gun at her. It turned out Doc was the undercover agent. At the same time, Albert captured Claire. As Alice looked at the items on the table, she began to simulate various ways to take down Dr. Isaacs in her mind. Dr. Isaacs had already anticipated everything, utilizing the combat chip implanted in his brain. Dr. Isaacs had already simulated countless scenarios, and each time, he could easily counterattack. Alice had to abandon her plans. Then, Dr. Isaacs revealed an unbearable truth to Alice. She was also a clone. Alice was dumbfounded upon hearing this. How could she be a clone? However, an old woman appeared next and Alice had to believe it again. The woman was Alice's original self. As it turned out, Alice suffered from progeria as a child. A condition that caused her body to age rapidly, appearing like a person in their 90s at just a few years old. To cure this terminal illness, Alice's father, Dr. James, conducted extensive research and finally developed the T-virus, which could repair human cells. The virus not only cured progeria but almost all terminal illnesses. However, when a young boy was treated with the T-virus, he suffered side effects and turned into a bloodthirsty zombie. This is the earliest appearance of a zombie. Upon discovering this, Dr. James wanted to immediately halt the use and research of the T-virus, but his partner, Dr. Isaacs, disagreed and had Albert cruelly kill Dr. James. Afterward, Dr. Isaacs became Alice's guardian and took over a significant portion of the company's shares. To better control the Umbrella Corporation, Dr. Isaacs creates a powerful artificial intelligence system in the image of Alice's childhood. It's the Red Queen. Using Alice's genes, he also cloned her. Even with the truth before her, Alice still couldn't believe it. However, an appearance by a holographic projection of Red Queen, displaying scenes from Alice's childhood, forced her to face the undeniable truth. This was why Alice couldn't recall her childhood memories. Clones simply didn't have a childhood. In her old age, Alice, in an effort to save humanity, uploaded the secret meeting of the board of directors to Red Queen's database. Red Queen, determined to prevent human extinction, had sought out Alice. The arrogant Dr. Isaacs believed that three women couldn't change the outcome. The elderly Alice is still in control of 50% of the company. Although she can't do anything about the shareholder, Dr. Isaacs, it was a piece of cake for her to fire Albert of Umbrella Corporation status. Albert Wesker, you're fired. Albert, now deprived of his Umbrella Corporation identity, was swiftly eliminated by Red Queen. To everyone's surprise, the seemingly invincible Albert was killed by a steel door. Doc, intending to shoot Alice, realized his gun had no bullets. Unknown to Doc, Alice had already detected his deception and tampered with his weapon. After being subdued by Alice, Doc was eventually executed by his girlfriend Claire herself. Meanwhile, Dr. Isaacs took advantage of the chaos and managed to escape. Alice and Claire immediately pursued him. Upon reaching the hibernation room, Dr. Isaacs took control of the security system to prevent Red Queen from interfering. Alice and Claire caught up to him, but Dr. Isaacs remained composed. Using his combat chip to dodge bullets skillfully, the three engaged in a heated battle, fighting all the way from the hibernation room to the mainframe room. Even with Alice and Claire taking turns, they were no match for Dr. Isaacs. Dr. Isaacs delivered a powerful blow that knocked Claire unconscious and kicked Alice into the laser corridor. Dr. Isaacs activated the laser weapons, but Alice's agile movements allowed her to avoid the lasers time and again. Dr. Isaacs, seizing the opportunity, rushed into the corridor, where he engaged in a fierce struggle with Alice. After several rounds, Alice found herself powerless and had her fingers severed by the lasers. However, Alice secretly planted a grenade in Dr. Isaac's bag during the fight. As Dr. Isaacs realized something was wrong, the grenade detonated, incapacitating him. Alice took advantage of this moment to snatch the T-virus serum from Dr. Isaacs and knocked him to the ground. With time running out, 
Alice rushed to the surface using an elevator. However, just as Alice is about to release the serum, it is suddenly caught by the arriving Dr. Isaacs. His speed was astonishing. At the same time, clone Dr. Isaacs, accompanied by the zombie army, arrived, seeing his identical face. What the hell are you? I'm you, you idiot. Clone Dr. Isaacs was bewildered, unable to accept that he was a clone. Clone Dr. Isaacs took the opportunity when the original Dr. Isaacs wasn't paying attention and eliminated him. In the ensuing chaos, the zombie horde attacked and killed Clone Dr. Isaacs. Seeing this, Alice hurriedly picked up the serum on the ground and dropped it on the ground before the zombie horde could pounce on it. The serum's effect was incredible, instantly killing thousands of zombies and Alice collapsed because of the T-virus in her body. But Alice didn't die because the serum only destroyed the T-virus in her body, not the healthy cells. However, zombies are different. Strictly speaking, they are already corpses. However, the serum can only spread through natural winds and it will take several years to kill all the zombies worldwide. Although the Resident Evil movie's story ended there, Alice's tale continued.